Alright guys, I'm back, hopefully. <laughs> um, over the past couple of months, I have been drifting just about every single weekend. I've been working on the car, I've been going drifting, I've broken it, then worked on the car, then gone drifting and broken it again, worked on the car, gone drifting, broke it again, worked on the car, went drifting. And it's been like that for about the last two, two and a half months. And though it's been a blast, um, I've really slacked off with the making of my videos, and that has really sucked for me. Uh, I really enjoy making my videos, and I have a whole lot of fun doing it, and I'm hoping that I can continue to do that and make good-ish videos for people to watch. So, today I'm making the last video in my Learning How to Drift uh, series. Uh, it's going to be my last because I have... I think I've kind of gotten over the learning curve of driving and I, it's really down to uh, figuring out my technique, becoming more consistent, driving faster, getting closer to cars, and you know just kind of getting to the, the nitpicky stuff and you know really getting my driving skills you know on lock, getting them down. Over the season I've been to 12 drift events. Um, and over that time, I have learned a handful of really important things that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, the first one is pretty simple, but also was kind of scary for me at first, and that is speed. With a low power car, you need to take as much speed into that corner as you can. With a higher power car, you can get away with going slower, but you know, let's assume that everyone has a really low power car. Um, you need to go into corners with a lot of speed. And it's really scary because when you're first learning, you're spinning out a lot. And when you're spinning out going really fast, it's super, you know, jerky and scary. And you might hit something or someone. And like, it's a scary thing. But that is a, a big thing. The second thing is letting go of your steering wheel. It's really weird for people who have been driving for a long time um, because you're always taught to you know keep your hands on the wheel at all times so getting used to letting go of the wheel and just letting it do its thing is kinda weird. You really have to learn and you really have to pay attention to the parts of the track where people e-brake entry and where people clutch kick and all that sort of stuff. Personally, I e-brake into almost every corner I go into. But when I'm transitioning, I usually throw in a clutch kick. You know, it, it kind of launches your car in, in the direction you want to go, and it keeps those wheels spinning. Uh, with a low power car, it's hard to keep those wheels spinning and stay in drift. Other than that, the biggest thing for, I think, any driver is going to be seat time. Um, so making sure you have a reliable car that's not over like too heavily modified that doesn't make a lot of horsepower uh, just a good solid car is going to be really important so you can have as much seat time as possible and you can go to the track as much as you can because at the end of the day that's what's going to make you a better driver your car isn't going to make you a better driver I think for that very reason it is important to learn how to drift with a lower powered car now whether it's like a stock SR 240 or whether it's a Miata you know there's, there's a happy ground in there and you know you can kinda go to either end but I think with the lower power cars you really are forced to learn how to manipulate the car to keep it in drift to keep yourself consistent and effective but here in Oregon, we get borderline half and half sun and wet. More wet than sun, but it's kind of close. So, I've recently started driving in the rain. And though I think a lot of people have this idea that drifting in the rain is a lot easier, uh, I personally think it's a lot harder. It's harder to control the car uh, the car has less grip, and in drifting, grip is actually kind of important. You need it to you know, keep your car moving forward. You need it to keep your car 
in control. Without grip, you can't control your car. And so rain takes away a lot of that grip, front and rear grip. So it makes it hard. And also what comes along with the rain is uh, slick spots. So in the track, certain spot, spots will be a little bit more uh, slick than others. Some will be more coarse, some will be more grippy, some will be, you get slick spots, like I, little tiny ice rinks on the track and they make your car almost impossible to control. And so there's a lot of people at my local track who end up going off the track, into the bushes, in the river, like all this bad stuff because of the rain and because of these weird patches that you know no one can really control. So for that reason, I think drifting in the dry is a whole lot better. Also, drifting in the dry, you can go a whole lot faster and have a whole lot more fun. And also, learning how to tandem. Probably the scariest thing for me, uh, learning how to drift, was figuring out how to tandem. And I think the best way for people to learn how to tandem is to get, you know, at least half decent at, you know, just driving, just getting around the track. And then find one driver who's a decent driver, at least a good driver. You know, like, they get around the track 80% of the time without spinning. And drive behind them. Don't tandem with them, but drive, you know, four car lengths behind them. Just so you get used to watching another car, watching the car's movements, and trying to time your movements to match that of the car in front of you. And as you get more comfortable with that driver, you can inch closer and closer to that driver. And I think keeping it consistent, being one you and one other driver, is important because you can get used to their style and really figure out how to control your car and adjust to their style. And after you really get good with them, you can kind of wander off to people, you know, elsewhere, other people you don't know, or you know, similar style drivers, and you can adjust your style to theirs and really uh, have some fun. But in the in the beginning, it is by far one of the scariest things to learn. Some people, I'm going to have a second video coming out pretty soon all about the other things, the not driving, you know, the tire wear, how to set up your car, the things to think about, how much does this shit cost? I'm going to have a whole nother video on that coming out, you know, maybe later this week. So I'm going to show you guys all of the driving footage I have gotten over you know this past season. And I have it set up in order from early to late in the season. So you can hopefully see how I've progressed as a driver and how I've gotten better. It was full lock. Fuck yeah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Fuck, that was good.
So there's all the footage that I have from this year's driving. Really sucks that I only got so much footage and towards the end of the season I got almost zero in-car footage. And so you, you can't really see how, you know, my movements have gone from super jerky and like scrambled everywhere to, you know, more of a smooth like yeehaw, you know. I've I've really become comfortable with the car and learned how to to control it. And I'm hoping to show you guys, you know, some in car footage, some GoPro stuff, um, in the next upcoming months. And uh yeah. So in the next video, I'll be talking about, you know, the the behind the scenes stuff of drifting. You know, how much it costs, how to set up cars, what's up with tire wear, what tires should you get? Do you even need tires to drift? <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Do that. Pretty close to a thousand subscribers. That's pretty cool. We should get some stickers. I don't know what I'll buy. Stickers are cool though. I want a sticker in my car on my car. And I can have two in my car. In one.